one of the first most important things we can do for our accounts is get our boundaries into our account. So right now I am in the field view website. So you would go to climatefieldview.ca and log into your account from there. And your account initially might look like mine, pretty empty, zoomed out. And what we want to do is get field boundaries in here. And the reason we want field boundaries in is threefold. The first, it's what our satellite imagery is going to be based on. So once we have a boundary, we're immediately going to get historical imagery for within that boundary from back to 2015 to the present. The second reason is field level weather. So our field level weather is based on radar. So to know which fields you are using, we need a boundary to be able to tell us where to draw data from and, and radar imagery from. So we need it for satellite imagery. We need it for weather. The third reason we want boundaries in our account is field recognition. Um, when we are using field view in the cab of our equipment, if we have a boundary in there, when we drive up to a field, if we have it set on auto recognize, we're not even going to have to change fields. It's automatically going to know which field we're in and help us get data correctly applied to the right field. Or if we have it on prompt when we drive up to the field, um, it's going to prompt us that you're approaching field A. Do you want to make this field active? And we can just say yes. So trying to you know avoid having our whole farm as, as one field, as uh, some growers are wont to do. Um, so we want our boundaries in there to be ready for seeding. So there's two main ways to get boundaries in there. Today I'm going to go over how to manually draw a boundary. So to do this, at the bottom left, you'll see a add a field button. So if I press that, first it's going to ask for a field name. So we'll give it a name, we'll give ourselves a client, and our farm name. You can name these whatever you want, however you want to keep your field straight. And the second part is zooming into a field. I'm just gonna zoom into random field in here. There's some nice fields. Perfect. So we'll say this is my field. And the second part is drawing our field boundary. So if I press the draw button, I have a few options. Generally, the easiest is going to be polygon. This lets me just tap around the field, be however specific I want to be, and manually create that boundary. Once I tap the dot that I've started with, it's going to complete the boundary. We can drag and drop to clean things up. And often I get the question, how accurate does my boundary need to be? So the good news is if our boundary is a bit too big, a bit too small, when we are out driving our equipment, it's still going to tag data to that farm. So even if I drew my boundary a little bit too small, if let's say I'm seeding um, five meters outside of that boundary, that data is still gonna be tagged to the field. So that's not something we have to worry about. Reasons that we might want the boundary to be accurate is for our satellite imagery. So one of our satellite image types, it's called a scouting bass. It's based on relative biomass. So if all of a sudden I have this slough in the middle and in early June that slough is bright green, full of grass, whereas the crop's just barely coming out of the ground, it's going to throw off that relative biomass and I'm not going to be able to see the same variability within the field. So if I have time, you know, maybe I'm going to choose remove a polygon and take out this slough in here so that my satellite imagery is a bit more accurate. Oh, I'm struggling today. I can clean it up if I want. Perfect, so we will go with that and I will save that boundary and I now have a field in my farm. So I'd wanna go and do that through my fields if I was wanting to manually add those fields. The other option is if I have boundaries, let's say shape files from my sprayer or, or some historical data, maybe a seeding map or a harvest map from last year, the other option for getting boundaries in my account is importing them. So if I press the import button at the top, this is where I can go and import data. So if I have that historical data, shape files, etc., I can Upload those files if you want to know both how to get it out of certain monitors, out of different software types, and how to get into field view. If you click the link to check your file compatibility, it'll take you to a, a page on our support type that talks all about getting data into field view and, and how and different file types that we can import. 
So that's how we would go and upload it. And one of the nice things is the system's going to automatically sort through data. So if let's say we import all the data from a monitor, it's going to say, hey, this is a planting file from this field. This is a harvest file from the other field. This is an application file. And it's based on the location of the data. So even if our fields are named different things in different monitors or different systems, it's based on the location of the data. So let's say if I go into planting, I have a few different crop types um, and they will be assigned to different fields. So if I was importing field boundaries, they would be under this fields tab and I would be able to select and import them from there. So we have the option of either manually drawing boundaries, you can see it's pretty quick and easy to do, or we can go and import historical boundaries if we have them or historical data. So that's the next step for getting your farm field view ready. It's a great one to do before the season. So as soon as we start getting new field satellite imagery for 2019, you will be having that beginning, of, beginning to mid April is about when to expect that, um, as well as field level weather. So take the time now before we start getting out in the fields to go in and get boundaries in your account so you can be field view ready.